glad that you could join with us in, in this recording. And our prayers that God bless you uh, in a special way. And we've got many uh, in whom to pray for. All right. So I want you to make sure that you continue to uh, hold up the church at large and hold up leadership if you would. Uh, remember uh, one of the young, Gavin, uh, Gavin Howard, he's uh, in the hospital. And so you want to make sure you hold him up. He has, uh, has uh, contracted the uh, COVID virus and, and, and he's having a time there. So make sure that you all, you all pray for him. Remember those that are just going through and remember the weak and the, and the strong. Remember the, the backslider and, and pray that the, the water is troubled. That, that folk will go repent of the sin and go down in the name of Jesus and, and remember those that have just lost their loved ones and so many people that we need to pray for in the situations and that are at hand and we want God to, to have his way and folk got some testimonies how God has, has blessed us over and over again if you see before me I'm going to ask Mr. Juan uh, Hunter uh, to pray uh, this morning but if you see before me for 12 stones and, and, and the word went forth on last Sunday uh, regarding the memorial stones and God has directed me to leave the stones there uh, for now because uh, we need to remember some things that God has done and when you come back this uh, next Sunday you'll find uh, some things uh, written on these stones uh, of what God has done and then underneath it underneath this table you're going to see uh, a, a a container uh, that allows each and every one of you in the course of the week that God has done some things for you, whatever he's done. You want to turn around and get uh, go down in his name and then you'll see that they can write on the little stone, just Redeemer, Redeemer. Now there's so many things that we can write down for what God has done. These 12 stones doesn't even, is not even enough. We don't have enough stones to even to, uh, to indicate what God has done for us, but we're gonna start with this, and then, and then in the course of, of time as it passes, you know what God's done for you that week. You take a little stone and just write on it and drop it in that box in that container down there. And doesn't have to be; it can be the same thing that you see on here. It's just your testimony you know, of what God has done, and you're gonna put it in there. But, but we thank God for being so good to us, and we are so grateful that God is with us on again on today as He has been in times past. Somebody else lift up their hand in their voice. Give God some glory. Give God honor. As the minister Juan Hunter Jr. comes and leads up before the throne of grace, and after which we would have Sister Beverly Howard to come and read scripture. Come if you would. Jesus, as we go before the Lord in prayer right now. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we praise you. We magnify you, oh God, for who you are. For you are truly a mighty and gracious God, and all power is in your hands. Jesus, we pray right now for healing, oh God. Healing in our house, healing in our body, oh God. Healing the land. Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We praise you right now, oh God, for all that you have done for us. We pray right now for deliverance, oh God, that the trouble, that the water is troubled, oh God, that somebody go down in your name, Jesus. For you are truly worthy of all the praise and all the honor. We thank you right now, Jesus, for protecting us. We thank you right now for covering us and sheltering us, oh God, from the storm. We thank you for giving us peace and mind. Jesus, we thank you, oh God, even in all the chaos, even in all the busyness of our lives, Jesus. You have remained there. We love you. We praise you. For you have always been there for us, oh God. You have always been faithful to us. You have always loved us. Jesus, for you are worthy of the praise right now. You are worthy of all our honor. You are worthy of all the glory, Jesus. And it shall all belong to you, oh God. Please bring about change in our lives, oh God. That when we go home, oh God, that we take you with us, Jesus. That that change that has came over our life, Jesus, that it is with us and it carries in our heart, that we desire it, oh God, that we desire more of you, oh God, that we desire more and more for your relationship with us. Jesus, please, oh God, have your way each and every day inside of us. Have your way, oh God. Allow us to be submissive unto you, oh God. Allow us to love not just you, but your people. Jesus, we thank you, we praise you. We love you for who you are. 
way in each and every one of us. Oh God, we love you. Please continue to do what it is that you're doing, for you are in control of everything. We thank you and we pray right now that you have already answered our prayer. We pray right now, oh God, that you're already doing it. We thank you, Jesus, because you have already brought us out. We thank you, Jesus, because you've already healed us. We thank you, Jesus, because you've already made a way. We thank you, Jesus, because you've already provided. You've already made provisions. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. This is a prayer of thank you, Jesus, of gratitude, oh God, for who you are. For you are the most high God. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of Lord. We call you Master. We call you Savior. And your name is Jesus. Oh God, how we love you. How we lift you up. How we praise your holy name. Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 
him. Hallelujah. For his goodness. I'm not going to be before you long, but I thank and praise God for his presence in this place yes. on this morning. Yes. He did not have to grace us with his presence, but he did. And because of that, Lord, I thank you. I'm going to read to you one scripture, one verse, and I'm going to come from Jeremiah chapter 17. And I'm going to read one verse, and that's verse 8 in Jeremiah 17 and 8. If you have your Bibles, I'll ask you to stand in reverence to the reading of God's Word. In Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 8, it reads, For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought neither cease from yielding fruit in the blessed name of Jesus Lord we give you honor on today for the hearing and the reading of your word we thank you oh Lord Jesus even on this morning. Lord, in the blessed name of Jesus, have your way, Lord Jesus. Lord, for our hearts have been prepared, hallelujah. Lord, you have already entered the sanctuary, hallelujah. Lord, you've already saturated the atmosphere with your presence. Lord, right now, as you prepare the table, hallelujah, Lord, allow us to feast. Lord, allow us to clean, hallelujah, and clean to the word God, but in it is our help, in it is our strength, in it is our life, oh Lord Jesus. Right now, as we dissect the word of God, Lord, and as we digest it into our soul, oh Lord Jesus, Lord, we ask you to minister to each and every one that's under the sound of my voice. Lord, use me, hallelujah, as a ready vessel. Lord, speak, hallelujah, for that servant business. In the blessed name of Jesus, have your way. Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So today I just want to uh, go give you a topic. And my topic is going to be, I will not be moved. Wow. Amen. And the, the subject had came to me a couple of weeks ago. I was out in my yard and I was pulling some weeds. And I don't know if you've ever pulled weeds before, but depending on the type of soil that the weed is in, some of them you can just barely touch it and pit pull it, and the whole weed root right. and everything just comes right out because the, the soil is shallow and it's not really dense. And I thank and praise God for the scripture that Sister Howard had read earlier about the, the, the seed and the different types of soil that it, that it lands in because that was confirmation for me that this is the word that God would have for his people on today. So the first type of weed is that weed that I shared with you. I was pulling weeds and some of them just coming right up. Then there was these other weeds that I was pulling and I don't know if you've ever pulled a weed but I grabbed onto one plant and when I went to pull it, Probably 10 other plants just started pulling right up with it because the root had kind of spread throughout the, the, the yard or throughout that area. So that one root had generated a bunch of other weeds. And when I thought about that as I was pulling the weeds, I thought about how when God blesses us and how if we're rooted in Christ, how the effect that he has because we're rooted, how it's going to affect all those other people around us. It's not just going to be an effect for us. It's not going to be just a blessing for us. But I thought about how it affects so many. It affects our children. It affects our neighbors. It affects yeah, our yeah. co-workers. It affects all those around us. So I thought about those type of the blessings and, and how indicative that is. Those weeds and those roots, how addictive they are for us as children of God. But then I, re I reached over and I, there was another type of weed. Now I know that y'all all experienced this type of weed. This other type of weed was one, I don't care how I try to pull it, and I don't know if you have pull weeds, sometimes you wiggle them around to try to make sure the root 
comes up without the head breaking off. I kind of dug around it, try to loosen up the ground. And no matter how difficult, how much I tried, that root did not come up. And eventually, the head of the root just broke, snapped off. And the root was still in the ground. And so when I was doing that, the Lord started speaking to me. He started telling me about how the, the root, and we're rooted in Christ. It doesn't matter how difficult situations might be. It doesn't matter what we go through, yeah. how pressed we might be, that we don't have to move. All right. And so he gave me that topic, I will not be moved, because it doesn't matter, hallelujah, what goes on in your life. We've got to be rooted in Christ. In order for us to have strength, in order for us to be steadfast, we've got to be rooted and grounded in Christ. Yes. And so I went on and I started thinking about the, the being rooted and grounded in Christ and the fact that, okay, in order for me not to move, I have to be grounded. So I started thinking about what is a grounded person? What does it take to be grounded? And I even asked my son uh, the other day, I was talking to him, and I said, so if somebody tells you you're grounded, what does that mean to you? And we got into a conversation but then I went and I reference on what it takes to be grounded. And it says that a grounded person is one that is in complete control of their physical and mental state. My, my. It said a grounded person is one that is reliable. You can count on a grounded person because they're not wishy-washy. They're not here and there. It talks about a grounded person yeah. is somebody that's humble, yeah. yet they're yeah. confident. They don't have to depend and get affirmation on others as to who they are. Right. It give them, they don't have to count on other people to understand or to get gratification about what they're able to do because a grounded person is confident. A grounded person is one that will encourage others. They don't have to be always the one being encouraged, but they have an encouragement for other people. They're one that will stand up for that that is right. They don't conform to be accepted by other people. And you know, that's what God has told us. He told us not to be conformed, but to be transformed that's by the right. renewing of our minds. But yeah. no matter what people say, no yeah. matter what people do, we have to be not conformed to what other people are doing. But when we're confident in who we are, and when we know who we are, we don't have to be conformed to get approval from other people. It says when you are a grounded person, uh, Lord, you are complete in complete control of everything. And it's not that we are in control, but when we're grounded, when we're rooted in Christ, it's because he is in control. Right. He said he will work all things out. Yes. He will direct our path. Yes. He will give us the direction in which to go. He will open the doors. He will close yes. the doors. That's why we have complete control. Hallelujah. Because God is the one, hallelujah, that is in control and doing it for us. It says that a grounded person is not so easily shaken when things happen in their life. Amen. And when I was reading that, I thought about the fact that, you know, things transpire in our life. And because of those things, we, uh, uh, we do or we act in different ways because of the things that transpire. We reconfigure what we're going to do, what we're going to say, how we're going to act, how we're going to respond. But this thing that is transpiring in our life, however, when we're grounded in Christ, it doesn't matter what's happening. We're going to be consistent. We're going to praise God in season and out of season. It doesn't matter what happens in our life. We're still going to be consistent in doing what God has, has called for us to do. It's not going to throw us off our game. When you know how sometimes when people, they stop going to church because somebody else stopped going to church. Because they see what other people are doing. Sometimes you see people that say different things. They make you help somebody and they didn't reciprocate that to you. And because of that, it, you change the way you did some things. But God says a grounded person has to be rooted that they will not change. They're not so easily shaken. And even when I think about the doctrines of today, because some people are low and take, oh, it don't take all of that. You don't have to do all that. All that Jesus-only stuff is not all of that. But when you are rooted in gravity, they'll say this is the 21st century. There are some things you got to change. You can't be doing the same things that they've done over 2,000 years ago. Because this is the day and age that we're living in. But I'm here to tell you, the word God never changes. He said that heaven and earth will pass away. But his word will never change. So a grounded person, they're not tossed to and fro with every doctrine. I'm running over here and doing what this person says. And now I'm running over there and doing what this doctrine allows. But a grounded person is consistent. And they say in that that God has told them. Because how many of you know holiness without Come on. no man? Shall see 
God. So we know that a grounded person is one that will not be moved. All right. So when I look at our text today in Jeremiah, Jeremiah is talking about two types of people. He's talking about the one that trusts in man, and then he's talking about the other one that trusts in God. He says that cursed be the man that trusts in man and maketh flesh his arm. See, we can't depend on other people. Why would we even depend on somebody that is limited? And you put all of our confidence in men, and they're going to let you down. He goes on in Jeremiah, you read a little bit before the verses that we read, he goes on and he talks about the devastation and the disappointment. You know how you counted on somebody to do something and then they don't show up or they don't do it like you want it and then you all disappointed or then you get frustrated because, right. you know, you had to be somewhere and they didn't get you there in time or whatever it was. When you put your trust in man, honey, man will let you down. Man will disappoint you. You know, I can't even put my trust even in myself. Okay. You know, I pray all the time, Lord, don't let leave me to myself. Because if I left right. to myself, I get my own self in some mess. Let alone depending on you or somebody else to do some things for me. But he said, curse it. Be the man that trusted the man. He's already telling you in Jeremiah that if you trust in man, it's not going to work out the way you intended it to do. It's not going to work out in how you believe it will be. So we can't depend on people that are limited. All right. Hallelujah. All right. But we got to look, hallelujah, the God, hallelujah, that is omniscient. Hey. We got to trust in the Almighty, the else to die. Hey. We got to trust in the God, hallelujah, that can do all things at all times. Hey. It's something about, hallelujah, he said that when we walk in the presence of God, uh, he said, blessed is the man that trusted in God, uh, because God can do all things. Uh, he said that God, hallelujah, he is the way maker. Uh, he is the miracle worker. Uh, he is the almighty. He is the creator, the redeemer. Whatever we need, he is. So when we walk after God, we walk in the promises of God. Uh, we walk, hallelujah, in perfect peace, because uh, that's what the scripture said, when we walk in the presence, in the promises of God, uh, we walk, hallelujah, conquering, we're victorious in everything that we do. Uh, I'm reminded in Exodus, uh, where Moses told the people, uh, where the Lord told the people, he said, wherever your feet shall tread upon, yes, yes. that is yours. Uh, that's the promises of God, but he goes on and he said, blessed is the man. It's talking about the promises that you will see, the promises that you will have when you walk in the presence of God. So how can you say, when you walk with God, and I don't know whether it's one day or one year, every day, hallelujah, is like a new day. Every day, hallelujah, I can say that every day with Jesus for me gets sweeter than the day before because I can look back and see what God is doing and even the little things that he does. The God that he opens. 
Uh, that they, uh, that it don't affect you. Uh, that it don't get you off your game. That it don't shake you up. Uh, but he goes on to say uh, that therefore when he comes, uh, and that he is when trouble comes, uh, yeah. when situations come in your life. See, I'm telling you, uh, just because you're blessed don't mean you're not going to have problems. Yeah. Uh, just because you're blessed, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have pain. Uh, but when the he comes and says, uh, you can see it. Uh, whoa, but you don't even realize that you're in the midst of it. When the heat comes, hallelujah, when you lost your job, oh, but because you don't even know the effect of losing your job, you're still looking for that house that God promised you, hallelujah. When the doctors say, oh, that there's nothing else they can do. When the heat comes, oh, you're still going through and making plans, hallelujah. But next year, oh,
looks like a, oh, but all is well with me because, hallelujah, I'm blessed. Hallelujah, and I'm rooted and grounded in Christ. So it don't matter, hallelujah. You say, yes, my kids are strung out on drugs, but what did God promise me? He promised me, hallelujah, that they shall be saved. So I'm still claiming the salvation. It doesn't matter, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that I'm behind on my rent. Oh, but God said, hallelujah, he will be a shelter. It doesn't matter, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, anything that I go through, it don't matter how empty my pocket seems. He said he will bless me abundantly and exceedingly. Of all that I ask, I even think. So I count on the word of God. My sleep will always be green, even in the midst of the drought. I mean, even in the midst of sorrow and depression, I Continually produce fruit. 
And I got to think about pretending to produce fruit. And I started thinking, what's the fruit? What's the fruit, Lord? What's the fruit? What's the fruit? And I said, so that's I started thinking, that's a well, it's the blessings. You know, if I'm being fruitful, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm, there's the blessing. I'm yeah. going to continue to be blessed because I told you the roots that spread all out. When I bless, you bless. Right. When you bless, he's that's blessed. Right. When he's blessed, she's blessed. So, so I said, what the fruit? I'm going to continue to produce fruit. So I got to thinking, okay, so Lord, what is the fruit that I'm going to be producing? How do I continuously produce fruit in the midst of a drought, in the midst of the fact that I lost my job, in the midst of the fact that I miscarried my child, in the midst of the fact that I lost my loved one, in the midst of the fact that they, I just got a vision, in the midst of all of that, how do I continue to produce fruit? And I thought about it, and I thought about it, in the midst of chaos, how, Lord, how in the world can I produce fruit? And he said, through praise. Ah, watch out, watch out. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man that trusted and hopes in the Lord. Uh, when you are gracefully grounded in Christ, uh, when you are rooted in Christ, I said you're not moved by your situations. Uh, you're not moved, uh, hallelujah, by how dire it gets. Uh, and because I'm not moved, because I'm not shaken, because I'm not worried about everything around me, because I don't care how it happens, because I believe in Christ in God. I will bless the Lord at all 
you lean to and they love to say, Lord, but I know. Hallelujah. Oh, but you hold the keys. Lord, 
I, I feel like I'm that weak. That I've already been broken. I, I, I don't even have a relationship with you anymore. There might be someone that, that wants God. God is here for you today. He will meet you right here because he came. He hung, bled, and died that we might have a life and that more abundantly. He came that we might have the promises of God and the promises that he has for us go beyond this natural, physical life that we look at every day, that we interact every week. He wants us to be able to spend eternity with him. And if you ever had one encounter with Christ, and you know how it felt from that one encounter, just think about eternity being equivalent to that Mama. one encounter that you had with Christ. Mama. God is here today. Glory. And he said, come. He's bidding you to come. He said, you want to be rooted in me, the first steps to being rooted, grounded in Christ, is being repentant, yes. repenting yes. of your sin, being baptized in Jesus' name, because there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. So to get rooted in Christ, you have to repent of your sins. You have to go down in his name, be baptized, water submerged in the name of Christ, and he will fill you with the name of the Holy Ghost. He will do that. But you, the first step you have to make is to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I know I've been going in the wrong direction. Lord, I'm tired. I'm sick and tired. Hallelujah. I've been governed. I've been dictated by my situation, by my circumstances. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to be stable. I want to be uh, 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 grounded. Hallelujah. That's the first step, repentance. And then the second step, is being baptized. That's what you have to do. And he does the rest. It's their one. Maybe there's somebody that I'm rooted and grounded in Christ, but I'm in the midst of the heat. And I know I'm not supposed to feel the heat, but I feel the heat. I know, hallelujah, that the pain is real. Hallelujah. I just need just some confidence. I need God to just strengthen me. Hallelujah. That I don't be deterred. If there's anybody that wants prayer, they can come now to get prayer. And even before I close out, I'll pray for those that are listening by YouTube or Facebook. But God, he's, he's, he's got some things that he wants for you. And, and the things that he wants for you, I like the scripture because in Jeremiah later on, he talks about God said, I know the thoughts that I had toward you. Thoughts to prosper you. The things that we go through, God doesn't want us going through things, hallelujah, and it affecting us, hallelujah, that it deter us. There's some things that he allow us to go through, that those things that he allow might, might impact us to change some things or to bring some things out of us. But he don't allow those things to destroy you. He don't allow those things to become who you are. Hallelujah. He don't allow those things, hallelujah, to come that it will deflect people's reflection of him in your life. So he said, I want you to be grounded in me, that I will be your guide, that I will be your strength. Hallelujah. That I will be your help, that I will be your provider. He said, all that you have need of, if you trust in me, if you hope in me, hallelujah. Hallelujah. These things are going to affect you like that. Hallelujah, you're going to be victorious in everything that you do. Every word that you know, hallelujah, you're going to be victorious. The words that come out of your mouth are going to be powerful words. Uh, words that speak life. Words that will raise the sick, hallelujah. He said those are the things that he's given us. When he came and he dwelled inside of us. When his power dwelled inside of us. Hallelujah, he said, I'm giving you power that... These, the, the heat's not going to affect you. The trouble's not going to affect you. When things start happening and we see balance all around us, uh, when we see, hallelujah, the different things that are transpiring, that, that they're not going to affect us like that. Hallelujah. But we're going to be rooted and grounded in Christ. Rooted. Is that going to be like a tree? And the thing about roots, uh, when you think about roots, the thing about roots, they go in and they spread. But even as they spread, they can get thick. They can get big. And when we want thick, big roots, because we want to be able to be strong in the Lord. Some of those roots, if you can have a little fine roots, it'll be easy to push a tree over. Because the roots are so small, or they so small, or so thin, or so small. But when the roots are really big and they stretch out, 
That tree ain't going nowhere. And even when the tree falls over, again, the roots are still right there. And the thing about it, we got to understand is this. In order for us to grow big, strong roots, we got to grow close to Christ. We got to seek him like never before. In order, if we want to be rooted in Christ, we need to stay in his world. If we want to be rooted in Christ, we need to be having conversation with Christ. That means we need to be praying, hallelujah. And it don't mean that when you pray to God, it don't mean you always got to have a thousand words to say. Sometimes it's just going before the Lord and being in that position that he can speak to us. But that's where our strength is going to come from. It's not going to be because I've been crying and I've been yelled and I've been snotted and I've been out. But no, it's going to be when he pulls back into us. So we want big, strong roots. Hallelujah. We want to be rooted in. We got to stay close to him. We got to stay close to him. We got to stay close to him. And the closer you get to Christ, the other thing about roots is the more, the bigger the roots are, the bigger the tree becomes. So if you want to be grow in Christ, you got to be able to develop those roots so that you can be strong in Christ. That you can be big in Christ. I will not be moved. I won't be moved. I won't be moved. I, I won't be moved. I've been walking with Christ for maybe 30, well, I've been saved for 34 years. I was born in the church. I was raised in the church. Yeah, I went out and did some things, but I came back into the church. And I'm determined this time. Last time, I was young and I was thinking, you know, this is kind of hard, it's kind of difficult. I'm just being transparent. I was young, I was like a teenager. And I was like, this is hard, this is difficult. I don't have any other friends that are saved. The things that they're doing, if I'm saved, I'm not supposed to be doing those things. And I just said, I'm going to move. I'm going to move over here and try this right now. And I did some things, but I'm telling you what. When God brought me back in, yes, yes, yes. and I'm older and I'm a little wiser now, hallelujah. But when he brought me back in, I'm determined, hallelujah. Heaven is my home. That is my destination. I won't be moved. I don't care if nobody else goes with me, hallelujah. I don't care if I don't have a friend in the world. But you know what? The thing about it, when you have it determined in your mind that you won't move, you don't have to worry about all that. Because God will bring people into your life. Amen. Yeah, I mean, so you don't got to worry about the friends that you're leaving. Because God will bring you new friends that you can go along, that will go along with you. Hallelujah. The things that sometimes people be like, well, I don't want to give up. It's, you know, it's fun going out to the club. Or it's fun doing this and that. And, 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 and that's what they like. And they're like, well, if I start doing this, it'll be more. But I'm going to tell you what, God will replace Everything that you find pleasure in the world, he will replace it in him. Everything that you find pleasure in the world. And the thing about it, it'll be better because it'll be more abundant. Hallelujah. You might like gambling. And, and you think, well, if I go to the gamble, if I go gamble, I can make some money. God will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out one blessing that you don't have enough room to receive. Hallelujah. So you so so you're not losing anything. Why fight laughing? He, he he will break laughter your way. Whatever it is in the world, I'm telling you right now, God, whatever God has to offer you is ten times, a thousand times better than what the world has to offer. And what he has to offer you is even better than that because sometimes the thing the world has to offer us brings about death. But everything that God has to offer us brings about life. <laughs>
trust God. Put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. He will bless you. Hallelujah. See them in abundance. You out, but I, I got you here. You 
Yeah,